my wife and I have shared 33 wonderful years of marriage. At 55 years old, we cherish our two children and two grandkids deeply. Our journey began in the 80s at a nightclub, where I worked as a bouncer. A date led to moving in together just two months later, and two years after that, we exchanged vows. Our life together has been filled with work, fun, and the joys of parenthood. Over time, my job transitioned from active to more sedentary, resulting in significant weight gain and health issues like asthma. Despite our love for each other, our intimate life suffered. We remained faithful to each other, as infidelity was a line we vowed never to cross, having both experienced its pain before. After enduring a stagnant bedroom for two decades, I decided to make a change for the sake of our relationship and my well-being. Over the course of two years, I shed 80 kilograms, 176 pounds, and underwent a tummy tuck. While some might see this as vanity, my motivations were clear, to witness our grandchildren's growth, improve my health, and reignite the passion in our marriage. And indeed, it did just that. We had sex about three or four times a week, and my wife enjoyed every second of it. I knew this because her body doesn't lie. So, we were in a position where we could enjoy our lives with each other, and she still says she is in love with me, and I love her. I have never cheated on her, and I know she has never cheated on me. It's just one of those things. Well, that was until three days ago. She went on a holiday with her two sisters, heading off interstate with them. I had no problem with this, as I trusted her. But she knew that cheating was a deal-breaker for us, and even after 33 years, it still is. We had a relationship where nothing was hidden. We had apps on our phones where we could see each other's whereabouts. This had nothing to do with a lack of trust, just simple safety. No phones were hidden, and we both had access to our messages and emails. Trust was never an issue. When I lost weight and started to look better, I gained more attention from women. But I always brushed it off, as I was happily married. My wife would comment that she felt a little insecure now that I was being found attractive by others, and she had put on some weight. This never worried me, as I love her no matter what she looks like. I tell her daily that I love her and how beautiful she is. Our sex life is amazing, and I regret that we didn't try hard enough early on. Anyway, I had just finished work and was heading home when I got a phone call from my wife. She was very upset and asked me if my sister-in-law had spoken to me. I said no and asked what was wrong, never thinking that I would hear what she was about to say. She told me she cheated and had sex with another man. She's so sorry, she didn't know what came over her. I was shocked, and my heart just broke. I sat in my car numb while she continued. She said her sisters and her were having a few drinks, and a married couple joined them. They drank until 2 a.m., and her sisters had already left to go back to their room. The bar closed, and she told me that she was very drunk and went with the couple to their room to keep drinking and talking. They both were very complimentary and kept telling my wife how sexy she was and how lucky her husband was. The man then started to touch her, and the wife encouraged them both. They told her no one would know, and to just enjoy it. She said she felt like it wasn't even her, but she had sex with the husband while the wife watched. In the morning, when she woke up, she was in bed with both of them asleep and ran back to her room. Her sister caught her, and she told her everything. Her sister told her she had to tell me, or she would. She told me all this while sobbing over the phone and begging for my forgiveness. I was just numb. How could she just throw away our lives? She was crying and kept saying she was so sorry and she hates herself. She kept expressing how much she loves me and how she made a terrible mistake. I told her she didn't make a mistake, she made a decision. I then hung up on her, turned off my phone, and went home. I just sat in a chair, trying to work out what is going to happen now. I cried over the loss of my wife as I knew her and the years we had together. I cried over the loss of our future together and the effect her decision will have on our family. My life as I knew it was over. I shut myself off for the last two days and then turned my phone back on. Needless to say, there were hundreds of messages from her and her sisters. The last one was that she is on her way home. My kids have also tried to contact me, as their mother was ringing them to see if I was alright and if they had heard from me. I rang my kids and told them what happened and that I am as okay as can be expected, but I will be leaving home to sort myself out before she gets home. I asked them not to tell her where I am going, but I need to come to grips with the end of my marriage. I have just sent a text to my soon-to-be ex-wife telling her we are getting a divorce and I don't want to hear from her. I don't care about the details, and I now don't care about her. 
the pain is incredible. I would never have thought that our love could have been destroyed so quickly. Now, for the first update, I may ramble a bit, but I have a lot going through my mind and it keeps jumping from one thing to another. A couple of clarifications, our dead bedroom wasn't completely dead, but compared to the last two years, it seemed so. The active job I had was in the military, and I got injured in a training exercise, which led to a desk job, then medical discharge, and then my wife and I bought a small business together. Now, before I spoke to my wife, I had spoken at length to my sister-in-law and her husband. The story my wife gave was certainly different from the one she gave me when she first confessed. My kids were horrified about what happened and just want to support me. I have explained to them that though they may be angry with their mother, she is still their mother and the grandmother of their kids. She loves them, and what? She did to our marriage does not change that my wife and her sisters did cut the holiday short and come home. I left a note for my wife, telling her to pack and go stay at her mother's. She did this. The details of how it went down are much worse than what my wife told me, though she confessed under the threat of being exposed. She didn't tell the truth, no surprise there. My wife broke down to her sister and apparently told her everything. I won't know what to believe until I sit down with my wife. The story she told her sister went like this, she loves me and loves our marriage. She never expected to do this. She blames our active sex life we have had over the last two years to explore what else she had been missing. She felt this way because she was always the attractive one in the relationship, but now she believes the roles are reversed. She was insecure and needed to be wanted by someone else. She swears it was the first time, but she did plan it. It was a fantasy she acted on. She was scratching an itch and was never going to tell me. Unbeknownst to her sisters, the couples she met were interstate customers of ours. I haven't met them, but my wife spoke with them all the time over the phone. My wife went for drinks to meet up with them, but her sisters tagged along, so they pretended to be strangers until they left. She did drink but was not falling down drunk. All three had this planned before they went away. My wife is coming around this afternoon to talk. Apparently, she is beside herself with what will happen. I already know what I will do. She chose to cheat, but everyone will feel the repercussions of it. Already, the truth about her cheating makes it more devastating to me, makes my resolve stronger. I didn't cheat. I didn't force her to lie. Her feelings that she has lost me and her marriage are spot on, and I don't give a damn how miserable she is. She did this, no one else, but we will now all have to deal with it. We are over, and we will navigate our changed lives. Now for the second update, firstly thank you to those 99% that showed support. It's really helping. For those others that blamed me, well, I have no doubt that you have your own issues to deal with, and good luck with that. This is a long post, as once I started to type. I couldn't stop. It felt good to get it down in print, so to speak, and was a little cathartic. This will be my last update for a while. For those interested in what happens, I will post in a few months' time to let you know how things are going. I had the talk with my wife yesterday. After so many years together, we both find that we don't sleep very well without the other beside us. It's been like this for decades. Well, last night was the first night that I had a very good night's sleep without her there. She came home and walked through the door. She looked terrible, lack of sleep, guilty, scared, and red-eyed. Normally, my heart would break and I would make her feel better. Not this time. I was sitting at the table and she started to cry again and rushed in for a hug, saying she effed up and is so sorry, etc. I put my hand up and told her not to touch me and to sit down. She sat down. I asked if she wanted a coffee as I was going to make one and she accepted. So, I made the coffee and went back to the table. Her eyes never left me. She started to speak, but I told her to be quiet and answer my questions and listen. This isn't about her but me and the marriage. I told her at this point we were done. She had made her choice, and this is about making mine. I had already made my choice, but I wanted to get some semblance of truth out of her. I thought if she thought she had a chance, she would be at least a little honest. I told her I had spoken with her sister, which was true, and I had spoken with the couple, which wasn't true, but she didn't know that. I had the strangest feeling inside of me, happy that she was so upset but sad for us at the same time, along with disappointment, anger, and all the normal emotions you would have. But I was calm, and this freaked her out the most. Honestly, I felt like I was conducting a job interview. 
I asked her how many times she said physically once and twice on video chat. I told her to explain how it happened. She told me that when they were talking business, it turned flirty. Then, when the wife said it was okay and got involved, over a couple of months, it moved on to watching them have sex. She told them it had always been a fantasy of hers to have sex while the wife watched, and they were all for it. She was crying. When she told me this and said it went too far, she knew it was dangerous, which made it more exciting for her. She started to tell me that she felt insecure, but before she could continue, I told her I don't want to hear that BS excuses and justifications. I had to wait about five minutes until she could pull herself together. I even got up and got her tissues. She said they met up as arranged and after her sisters had left the bar, they went straight to the couple's room. I asked her if she ever intended to tell me, and she said no, it was just a fantasy that she thought she could fulfill and never think about cheating again. I called BS and asked if she had cheated over the last 33 years. She said never. I told her that now it didn't matter how many times she cheated, either once or a thousand times, the result would still be the same. The only one it will hurt is she is lying, as our kids and her relationship with them and our grandkids. I told her I don't believe her, but at this point, it's irrelevant. At this, she started to realize I had no intention of working through her infidelity. She begged me to work on her marriage. She would do anything, I could do anything. She would let me have affairs if I stayed. She promised she would never cheat again. I told her to listen to what she was saying. She has degraded herself enough. I would never cheat in a marriage, and if I did sleep with another woman, it would mean we were separated with no chance of reconciliation. This is the last thing on my mind. She reached over to try and grab my hand, but I told her that I will never touch her again. It's not that I am judgmental of anyone's lifestyle, it's their own business, and I understand people do have affairs, open marriages, etc. But the point is we didn't. The trust and respect were destroyed when she planned to have another man inside of her. I have always been a pragmatic man, and I just felt relief. I told her we will make this as easy on us as we can. She took this as hope for our relationship, but... I told her, no, we are done. I will never touch you again, and I meant it. I could never forget that she screwed another man. The woman I loved and married is now dead to me. She died when she not only slept with another man but planned it. All the good memories we have the holidays, building our first home together, having and bringing up our children, all the laughs in life we face together are just memories. We are now going to have two separate lives, and I, for one, am looking forward to seeing what happens. And they will not include you. When I do meet another woman, I hope to start new memories with her and hope that I do find love again. She was shaking and crying when I told her this, but it didn't faze me. I just wanted this woman out of my house. She couldn't continue with the talk, so I went down to the shed and reached out to my kids by phone while she composed herself. I told them what was happening, and they were very supportive. They said to not drag it on and just finish it. I went back up, and as soon as I walked through the door, she started again with the apologies, saying we can make this work. I sat down and said, we are going to sell the house and business and split everything 50 fiftieths. You can have the car, and I will take the truck and my motorcycle. You can take the cats. Then I told her not to ring me, text me, or contact me in any way unless it's about our kids or the grandkids. I will contact the lawyers and start the ball rolling for the divorce, and she is free to go sleep with anyone she wants, as she is now a free woman. She told me that she didn't want to sleep with anyone else and that I was being deliberately mean and unemotional. I told her that I was being honest and that her actions had put me in an emotional void. I told her that she is the only one to blame for the destruction of our marriage and no one else. I loved her unconditionally, and she is the one who screwed it up. Then, I left the house so she could sort herself out and take a few more things with her and went over to my daughter's. I stayed there for a few hours, talking with her and playing with my granddaughter. When I got home, she had left. As I said, I had the best night's sleep without her I have ever had. Now, to see what happens over the next six months or so. Now, for the third update. Thank you for all the messages and responses, it has helped me maintain my focus. Well, it's been five hectic weeks since the soon-to-be ex-wife threw away our marriage. I have had a lot of time to reflect on my decision, and I still believe I made the right one. I could never trust her again. I could never touch her again. Seriously, it makes me sick to even think about it. 
it was her decision to cheat and destroy our marriage for no other reason than she thought she could get away with it. She is still staying with her mother, and I had been getting the house ready for sale. We had been in this house for 20 years, so a lot of crap needed to be done and cleared out, but I did it and we put it on the market. There are a couple of eager buyers, so I'm hopeful it will be sold in the next week or two. The business has already been sold, thankfully. One of our clients wanted to expand, and I accepted the offer last week. Settlement will take place in about a month. You always hear about divorce, but it's already a pain in the butt where I live. You have to be separated for 12 months and one day before you can file for divorce. Then it takes four months before it goes through, and that's only if it's uncontested. Property settlement is a separate issue and is not done until the divorce is finalized. I don't plan on having anything left of our joint possessions left to settle, and as long as she continues to sign the sales contracts, it will make my life a lot easier to move on. Her way of thinking is different, though. My son has only spoken to her once, and apparently it was not a nice phone call. To be clear, my children are grown adults with children of their own. I told him it will take time, but she is still his mother, and she was a good one. Don't let her decision destroy a relationship with her. My daughter, on the other hand, has been talking to her throughout. She is ashamed of what her mother did but has been supporting her through the breakup. My daughter is a very honest person who tells it like it is and is giving her mother the warts and all repercussions of what she did. My soon-to-be ex-wife, however, is deluded enough to think that I will get over it and forgive her. She thinks that all the years we have been together will be enough to make me change my mind. When she came over to sign the real estate contract and told me I can't believe she thinks I'll change my mind, that I still love her, and that she'll be a better wife when I do. We'll still grow old together and have a wonderful life with this as just a speed bump in our marriage. That we'll both get over it. I was gobsmacked. I just looked at her and said she was effing nuts to think any of that. She lied and cheated in the worst way possible. She had another man inside of her. She sucked another man's part while his own wife watched. How the hell could I even want to touch her again? She said she knew she shouldn't have gone through with it, she didn't know what she was thinking, it wasn't even that good. I told her to shut up, and I didn't want to hear if she enjoyed it or not. The point is she effing did it. I told her we have zero hope of reconciliation. I want nothing to do with her, and I'm looking forward to getting on with my life without her. I think she's in massive denial about what is happening. She no longer has any control over my actions or is entitled to her scheming and cheating, which ended a loving marriage. Her actions are why this is happening. She knew this before she did what she did, so she can't be so naive to think it's not happening, because it is. The funny thing is that I'm getting a fair amount of attention from other women now. I am certainly not interested in having anything to do with women at this time, but it's nice to know that when I do, I will have plenty of options. The soon-to-be ex-wife even got angry that women we know have been coming over to visit and bring me dinner just to talk. Of course, she told me she wants me to get it out of my system and she will be waiting. I mean, seriously, how effed up is she? The only thing I want out of my system is her. Emotions are still a major factor, hate, anger, disgust, the feeling of loss, betrayal, and sadness. But I'm a strong man, and I will deal with them. My goal now is to focus on getting rid of any financial entanglement with my wife and get on with my life. Now, for the final update, three months down the track, and I have moved things very quickly. The business was sold, the house is sold, legally separated, waiting for the divorce waiting period, but for all intents and purposes, I have separated all our joint assets, and I'm starting on the road to my new life. I would never have thought that I would be where I am today three months ago. I had the life I wanted, a loving wife, self-employed, great family and friends, and a nice home. I was looking forward to having my wife with me for the rest of our lives. Then, my soon-to-be ex-wives screwed it all up for her and for our family by lying, cheating, and being disloyal. We had our problems like every long-term couple, but we always stayed true to each other. When she got caught, it destroyed me. The loss of our lives together was devastating, and I could not fathom why she did this. But this is where my life changed. It was not what I wanted, but it was decided for me by my cheating wife. I am a pragmatic man who has always had strong family values, and this has made the transition to where I am now easy for me. I have made the decision to not let my feelings make me wallow in self-pity, and I refuse to act the victim. It gets you nowhere. With the sale of my family home and the business, after splitting everything equally with my assumed-to-be ex-wife, 
I had enough to buy two small units near my grandchildren. My son and daughter live in different states with their partners and kids. I did this because I want my own space but to be close enough to visit. I am still working, as a previous business competitor offered me a part-time role, which I have taken up. It still gives me a lot of free time to start enjoying life again. There were a couple of weeks that I didn't have anything to do, so I jumped on the bike and went riding. No destination, just stopped for coffee and sightseeing. I stopped at pubs at night and enjoyed a couple of drinks before heading off the next day. What has surprised me is how the whole casual relationship scene with women is, and I must say, I am liking it. I hooked up with a couple of women over the two weeks with no expectations, just sex and fun with no emotional baggage. I am surprised at how well I am feeling. A few people have asked me if I ever contacted the couple that my wife cheated with. No, I see no need, nor do I have any desire to. It was my soon-to-be ex-wife's decision to cheat on me, not theirs. I want no contact with them, they mean nothing to me. Honestly, the best revenge against the cheating partner is the display of apathy and just getting on with your own life. Sure, you still think about what happened, but life goes on. Concentrate on self. My soon-to-be ex-wife seems to be clinging to the hope that I'll eventually forgive her and take her back once I've cooled down and feel the absence of her presence. However, I've made it abundantly clear to her that our marriage is definitively over, without any possibility of reconciliation. I've reached a point where her actions and choices no longer concern me, just as mine no longer concern her. Even though my daughter has informed me of her mother's ongoing denial and her feelings of sadness and embarrassment over her actions, I've assured her that reconciliation is out of the question. Her remorse seems to stem more from getting caught rather than genuine regret for her actions. Despite life taking an unexpected turn, I'm eagerly anticipating the future ahead. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe to help share the video. Until next time.